Hi, Clara. Thank you so much for sitting down and chatting with me. Oh, it's a pleasure. I'm really excited to be here. Awesome. So uh, could you please uh, explain uh, what your connection to autism is? Yes. Yeah, so um, I'm the Vice President for Clinical Programs for Autism Speaks. And uh, in my role, what I do is that I oversee a large uh, network of uh, resources and clinical programs that really serve to facilitate um, translational research. So um, the first, I came into the field of autism, I worked for uh, uh, the nonprofit Cure Autism Now, and I was brought on to develop the uh, Gene Bank, so their Autism Genetic Resource Exchange. Okay. And as that program grew, um, it became really uh, almost a centerpiece, especially for all the genetics researchers here at IMFAR. Um, I'm so delighted to be here and hear that so many of the different genetic studies that are being presented have used the AGREE resource for their research. Um, and so when I, uh, over the course of the last uh, eight or nine years, I have, um, uh, in my portfolio, I have the Autism Tissue Program, which is a post-mortem brain donation program. And it's similar to AGREE, where researchers get access to actual brain tissue from individuals with so, autism. So you run a program? Um, I run several programs. I okay. run about... Um, well, that's great. Four programs. Wow, that must be a lot to handle. Yeah, no, it's but it's fun. How but do you it, manage all of that? I have great staff. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 it takes a village actually to do what to, to do the work that we do. And uh, what got you interested in working in the field of autism? Well, I was actually I got when I was in college I started working in the field of psychiatric genetics and I was working on a huge biological program project on schizophrenia. Okay. Back in Boston and uh, I was involved in eye movement research and a lot of the similar types of research that um, is coming about now in autism. And so um, after I got my uh, I did all my graduate training, then I kind of um, I hopped back into the field of psychiatric genetics. And uh, I just, I fell into autism. You fell into autism. I fell into autism. So um, can you explain uh, just in simple terms w what a gene bank is? Absolutely. So one of the things that uh, a, lot of ad a lot of parents ask researchers is what can we do to help you accelerate the pace of research? And certainly 11 years ago when the gene bank was founded, uh, these uh, a group of parents went to the federal government and said, we, want, we need to make, make things go faster. And they said, well, what you can do is that you can start a gene bank. And by that we mean, what, because you're an advocacy organization, we want you to recruit nation, families nationwide. We want you to go into their homes and collect blood samples from these families. And we want you to do all of the clinical work and the clinical evaluations so that the researchers don't have to do it. So we're in the business of taking the family recruitment and the data collection completely out of the hands of the researchers so that they can do what they do best, and that is come up with really cool and neat experiments, and we give them the, the DNA and all the clinical information that they need to do their projects. So we, what started off as a collection of 100 families has now grown to over 2,000 families. So genetics is all about numbers. It's all about statistics. And so you need large numbers of patients in order to be able to do really good statistics that are meaningful. So what we do is that we recruit families nationwide. And these are families that have two or more kids with autism. OK. How many individuals do you need for a research study? You know, it all depends on the question. Um, so many families, uh, many researchers rather, they 900 families might be sufficient for their analyses. Um, now, because we're primarily a family-based resource, we have um, our, the majority of our families have more than, than, uh, than one child affected. So depending on whether you're doing family-based studies or other types of studies, some, some people in the field think that we need 40,000 individuals to really understand what's going on. Um, do you know anyone with autism? I know many, many people with autism. Yeah. Um, how do you find the families? So we, um, we advertise, obviously, through uh, Autism Speaks, because the AGREE program is a program that's supported by Autism Speaks. Um, and we just we go to walks. We go to all kinds of uh, parent conferences. 
and we advertise and we basically say we make the information available we talk about agree we let them know what a cool program it is and we let parents know that they can be part of the solution and this is a way that parents and researchers can work together to actually help us find the answers tell me about the ATN the autism treatment network oh the ATN the ATN is one of our signature programs at Autism Speaks. Um, it's a, now an international consortium of 17 uh, children's hospitals and academic medical centers. We have 15 in the U.S. and two in Canada. And what this consortium does is that it's really setting the stand, developing a standard of medical care for kids with autism. So there's so many different issues uh, that uh, kids with ki individuals, not just kids, with autism suffer from gastrointestinal issues, sleep problems, seizures. Um, they have all kinds of uh, what we call comorbid psychiatric disorders. Some of them. And have a comorbid means you have more than one condition that come together. As correct. The okay. Correct. So, um, so what the ATN is doing is trying to develop standards of care. So, for example. Um, if you knew someone that had cystic fibrosis, you could go to one of 134 clinical care centers at most children's hospitals have CF centers. And that child will get a very systematic evaluation and that child will likely be able to take advantage of whatever treatments there are that exist for cystic fibrosis. We want the same for individuals with autism. There is no standard of medical care. And so what the Autism Treatment Network has done is that it's brought together six subspecialties and they have to work together. It's multidisciplinary and we have um, a centralized mechanism so that families don't have to piece together their medical care. Now we've also been very successful in attracting um, federal, federal dollars for research. So we also, we, we three years ago we received a grant from HRSA, which is a, the branch of the federal government that focuses on um, resources and services. And we have 930 patients right now that are involved in uh, research protocols. So when you get grant money, uh, where does it go? What, what, what's the most expensive part of what you do? So we have uh, a lot of our, uh, I have uh, a lot of funding from the National Institute of Mental Health to support all, all of my programs in one way or another. Um, a lot of our researchers, they have to ask uh, research questions and then the funding goes, the funding goes to support uh, their experiments and their studies. So, for example, we have a study that's looking at bone density in kids with autism. We have another study that's okay. looking at EEGs and uh, seizures in kids with autism. So, it depends on the question. Thank you so much, Claire. It You're was welcome. great talking to you. Thank and, you. And uh, I look forward to uh, speaking with you again at some point. Me Maybe too. Maybe next in Awesome. All right. Take care.